For more on the coronavirus, let's bring in Dr. Tyson Bell. He's a critical care and infectious disease physician and medical ICU director at the University of Virginia. Dr. Bell, welcome. It's good to see you again. So under these new CDC mask guidelines, fully vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask outside as long as they avoid crowded areas. What are your thoughts on this new guidance? I think this makes a lot of sense because uh, we know that being outside rather than being inside does limit the spread of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. In addition, we know that being fully vaccinated does decrease the risk of asymptomatic infection. And asymptomatic infection has been a major driver of infections uh, across the globe. Uh, so putting the two together, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we do have to still use common sense, however. So we don't want to uh, be around large crowds, particularly those that are packed in tight. There's a famous example of the White House uh, Rose Garden event from October of last year. So being outside in and of itself is not enough. But ultimately, I think this is good because it provides other incentive for people who may be on the fence to get vaccinated, to get back to uh, more things that are close to normal life. Well, realistically, going unmasked in a group outdoors means trusting that those that you've been with have been fully vaccinated. Dr. Bell, do you see some risk in that as people gather, especially with extended family and friends? Well, sure. And I think whenever uh, two groups of people come together, there's going to be an element of risk there. We can't avoid that with the, with the pandemic. But what we're getting at here is that that risk is low. So if you're fully vaccinated, especially if you're around other fully vaccinated people and you're outside, that is going to be a low risk, not zero risk, but low enough that it can be tolerable. Um, especially if you're around other people that are vaccinated and other people that are, are that are low risk if they were to acquire infection. So I think there's a there's a balance here between uh, trying to get people instead of to get vaccinated, trying to gradually transition back to doing more normal things. I don't think it's going to be like a light switch where we just all of a sudden take all the mask off and do everything as we're normal. This is a way to kind of ease into it. Right. I think a lot of folks are going to feel like that's what they want to do initially is be kind of very gradual in the way that they sort of re-enter those kinds of uh, social gatherings. Well, a number of states, doctor, are seeing a major drop in vaccine demand. At least seven are administering less than 70 percent of their supply. Is that concerning to you? I think it means that we have to change our strategy. So for the most part, we vaccinated the people who have been eager to get vaccinated and those have been able to either because they could sign up, they could drive a certain distance, they could take off time for work. But now comes the hard part. We have to effectively message those who may still be on the fence or less eager to get vaccinated and those who have difficulty gaining access to vaccination. Uh, so now we have to get it more widely distributed, the vaccine, into communities so that you come across it on a regular basis because the two are actually linked. Your decision to get vaccinated can in part be linked to your access such that if you are on the fence but you're seeing it regularly in the course of your daily life and you're seeing people around you getting vaccinated and getting protected, that's that extra incentive for you to get vaccinated. So we have to switch strategy and play more ground game now. Well, the CDC is predicting COVID deaths in the U.S. will drop again this week. Do you believe this trend will last? I certainly hope so. I've learned to be humble uh, when uh, I'm trying to predict the future when it comes to the pandemic. But, um, you know, here's what we're seeing now. Over half of adults have been vaccinated at least with one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. In addition to over 82 percent of those who are 65 and above have been vaccinated. So um, you, know, you could you know, draw from that that we are going to see uh, less uh, less deaths, which is certainly good news. Temper that with the fact that we are seeing more young people being hospitalized. So uh, Michigan, for example, are seeing uh, you know, double the number of, uh, of people in their 20s, 30s and 40s being hospitalized than they were in the fall peak. And part of that is linked to the variant spread, particularly B117. So we still have to stay vigilant and, and uh, stick with public health measures and expand vaccination as much as possible. But I certainly hope that this trend continues. Finally, doctor, the U.S. is sending supplies to India. In the last week alone, India has reported more than 2.3 million new cases. How concerned should we be about the virus mutating and potentially impacting U.S. recovery efforts? Uh, well, I will say this is very concerning and it's keeping a lot of us up at night. Um, you know, first thing I'll mention is that testing is not as widely available in India. So the numbers that are reported are almost certainly higher. We also know that whenever the virus uh, you know, copies itself, there's a chance that it could uh, change and become a variant that could either 
uh, become more transmissible and more infectious, could become more deadly, or could escape the vaccine. And so we have the perfect recipe to generate more of these variants, and that's why we have to do as much as we can to try to help India get their outbreak under control. It's definitely in uh, everybody's interest to uh, tamp down as much as possible what's taking place there in India. Dr. Tyson Belforest, doctor, good to have your insight and expertise. Thank you. Thank you.